Oh, eyes haven't seen. I choose to believe in great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Great things in my life, in my life, you do great things, you do great things in my home, in my home, you I do, do great. great. I choose to believe in great things. Eyes haven't seen, eyes haven't seen. I choose to, eyes haven't seen, eyes haven't seen. I choose to believe, eyes, eyes haven't seen. I choose to believe in great things. Let's take it up. Expecting great things. Are you expecting something? I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Are you expecting a healing? I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And you'll find that when you believe what God said, that something happens and it comes to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing um, I am a friend of God. We're just having a do-over of last week. How many of you know that God calls us his friend? We are his children. He does so much for us. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Let's sing, I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend 
I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. Lord, I'm a friend I of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. One more time. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. God is good. He has blessed us and he has kept us. And we're so glad and so grateful to be in this house one more time. Come on and just say thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God praise today. You're worthy. You're King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. There's nobody else like you. And we bless and praise your holy name. And we thank God for being in this house one more time. For those that are in the sanctuary, for those that are streaming live, 
God bless you and thank you for being with us on this morning. Amen. Come on and just say thank you, Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Hasn't he been good to you this week? Hasn't he cared for you and protected you? He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. And we bless his holy and his wonderful name. Amen and amen. It is Clergy Appreciation Month, and I received this t-shirt straight out of God's word. Amen. Now, I'm usually a, a dress shirt wearing preacher. Amen. But I, so, I was so inspired by this shirt. Amen. I said, I'm wearing it today. Amen. And so we just thank God because God has been good to us and we bless and praise his name. Amen. Amen. Now, there's two important announcements that I have. Amen. On tomorrow, we are going to have a men's conference call at 7 p.m. Amen. We typically do this via Zoom, but we're going to do it by conference call to make sure that we can have maximum participation. Come on and say amen. Amen. And that is at 7 p.m. So, brothers, please dial in. Amen. We'll send out the text reminders, but we want to come together and we want to fellowship one with another. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And also, the ladies are sponsoring a Zumba Zoom, and that is going to be on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Amen. And if you are interested, amen, reach out to us. We'll make sure that you have the information. Amen. And Brittany Smith is going to be with us, and we're excited about the ladies having that Zumba Zoom. Amen. We have to come together and fellowship one with another. Amen. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. It's important. It's important. You've heard the expression that it is a poor frog that does not praise its own pond. Amen. And we want to come together. This is our church. Amen. Come on and just bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want to pray right now because I am aware that there's challenges happening everywhere, amen, all over the city of Philadelphia. We have an election that is less than 30 days away. Uh, this pandemic is lingering, and we need the Lord who is on our side to intervene on our behalf, amen. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. We need God to continue to reign, continue to sit on the throne, and we cannot lose sight of the fact that God is still in control. Amen. So let us pray together. Won't you join in with me? Won't you touch and agree with me at this time that no matter what you're going through, no matter the challenge, we come to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We come to the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. We come to God Almighty. Lord, you are sovereign and you alone sit on the throne. Beside you, God, there is no other. And so, Lord, we thank you for being in our midst right now. We thank you for being King of Kings. We thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for stopping by and seeing about us. Thank you, Lord, that you never leave us, nor do you ever forsake us. We bless and we praise your name, God, that you don't grow weary or tired of us. Thank you, Lord, that we can cast our cares at your feet, for you care for us, God. Thank you, Lord, that you allow heaven to yet touch earth on our behalf. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, first we just want to tell you thank you. First, we just want to worship you. First, we want to just bless your name, God. First, we want to just acknowledge who you are, that you are yet supreme, God, that you are yet our hope, you're yet our trust. Lord, we glorify you and we magnify you and we worship you because you're Christ the Lord. You are our Savior. You're our King. You are our God in whom we trust and we bless your name and we thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for being good. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We bind up the hand of the enemy in every attack and every false reality that seems real. And God, we cling to your word right now. Lord, touch the sick among us in the name of Jesus. Bring deliverance and bring healing, God, in the name of Jesus. Let the spirit of healing, God, take over our bodies. Take over our minds. Yes, Lord. Take over our spirit. Let the spirit of healing and of wellness, God, rest and abide on our homes and on our families. In the name of Jesus, 
take contaminants out of the atmosphere. Bless and protect and keep and cover your people in the name of Jesus. Lord, whatever the burden, if there is a financial need, oh God, hallelujah, meet the need, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. We touch and agree right now, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would work, that you would do the work, God, that you would move, God, that you would deliver, God, that you would set free, that you would loose your power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And for our children, we pray for them, God. Cover them and keep them. Yes, Lord, give them a do right mind in the name of Jesus. Come on and just say Jesus. Come on, call his name Jesus. Call his name three times. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord, be our deliverer and our keeper. And we will continue to magnify you, glorify you, and praise you for all things. In Jesus' precious name. And let the church say amen and amen. Come on and put those hands together for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. And we worship him and we adore him and we magnify him. Amen. On today, the Lord has given us a word. Amen. For his people. And I believe that this is a right now word for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Just repeat after me. Something good is going to come out of this. Amen. Something good is going to come out of this. Amen. Our scripture is going to come from a very familiar passage of scripture, and we are going to be dealing with Psalms 23. Amen. Psalms 23. But what I thank God about is that the Lord has given us fresh eyes through which to look at this familiar passage of scripture amen and you know psalms 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake yea Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our God and our Father, we ask that you would bless your word, the hearing of your word. Allow your word to accomplish that which you have sent it to do, that we may all leave edified and encouraged in the name of Jesus Christ, that the devil be defeated and that you would be exalted. In Jesus' name, Amen. This particular psalm, we've heard it over and over and over again that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David knows who God is to him. And he calls him his shepherd because David has spent many days and many nights and many evenings in the field caring and protecting and leading and guiding sheep. And what David says essentially is as I care for the sheep of the field, so does God care for me. And there's some things that he has learned about God that relates to him as a shepherd. And you understand it. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Now, when I read all of those scriptures, all of them make sense to me. That he knows who God is and that God is going to lead him God is going to guide him. He's going to let him eat in green pastures. He's going to restore his soul. All of this sounds delightful. It all sounds wonderful. 
And I imagine as David has thought about his care of the sheep, the sheep are clueless of the dangers that exist and that lurks as the shepherd is leading and guiding them to safety. But what perplexes me is that as he is talking about God, we come to this fourth verse that says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And the reason that this particular verse stresses me out is because I thought if I was walking with God, the entire psalm would read like the first three verses. That he restores my soul and that he leads me in the paths of righteousness, that he calls me to lie down beside still waters. But now I'm perplexed and I'm confused because it says that I'm going to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Has it ever happened to you that you are walking with God and you're serving God and you're doing all that you know how to do and instead of seeing the peace of God, the joy of God, the comfort of God and being able to celebrate and praise God, you feel challenges in the midst of your circumstances. Has it ever happened to you that you see dilemmas and complications and confusion where you expect it there to be joy and praise? I I'm looking at this particular text and I'm perplexed that I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. What's even more perplexing to me, it says, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So he's leading me and I end up in the valley of the shadow of death. That's the last place that I thought I would be led to. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. It just goes to show that sometimes when, when, when we are in certain places that are uncomfortable, it's not because God is not looking at us and it's not because we have stepped outside of his will. Sometimes God will allow us to be in uncomfortable places and that uncomfortable place is a part of God's divine plan in order to bring us to where we need to be. Somebody say, ouch. I know it because you've been rebuking that uncomfortable place. You've been rebuking that uncomfortable co-worker. You've been rebuking that uncomfortable neighbor. You've been rebuking that uncomfortable situation. But I just stopped by to give you some bad news on today. Sometimes those uncomfortable situations could be the very place that God is leading you in order to bring you to where he wants you to be. And if you don't believe me, just ask Jesus who will tell you that he was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and to defeat the devil that he could go on about his mission. Come on and say thank you Jesus. Perhaps you are in an uncomfortable place because God wants you to defeat that devil that you may go about his business and about his work. Come on and shout hallelujah. It gives you a different perspective about uncomfortable situations. It gives you a different perspective about the circumstance that you are in. It's almost like when you go to a restaurant and it, it's an expensive restaurant and you don't quite enjoy the food and so you order up a bunch of rolls and, and bread rolls and you say I'm going to get something out of this. Something good is going to come out of this. Come on and say hallelujah. Now, 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 I can't exactly explain to you why it is that God leads us into uncomfortable situations. But I can tell you what the Bible tells me about God and how he thinks. Isaiah 55 and 8 says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are my ways your ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Job 9 and 10 teaches us that his ways are past finding out. And so there are some things we don't quite understand, but one thing we know about God's track record is that God will use uncomfortable places in order to bring us to where we need to be. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 3.19 tells us that the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes God will bring you into an uncomfortable place. 
But that uncomfortable place is just a temporary training ground for where God wants to bring you to. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Isn't it interesting how God uses the unusual to bring you to a wealthy place? Isn't it interesting how God begins to pull together threads that seems disconnected in order to connect the pieces of your life? The Bible tells us that he uses the foolish things to confound the wise and the weak to confound the strong. God has a way of doing it for us in an unusual manner. Hallelujah. Now, this is what I learned about this song. What David is saying is, I know who he is. The Lord is my shepherd. Watch this. And because I know who he is, I know what he will do. Come on and shout glory. Let me see if I can give it to you like this. He, he says, He's my shepherd, so I know he's going to lead me. I know that I'm not going to want. I know that he's going to restore my soul. He didn't say that it wouldn't get weary. He didn't say that I wouldn't be afraid. But he says, I know what he's going to do because he is my shepherd. And y'all looking at me funny. Uh, let me see if I can give it to you better. Uh, you know, the barbershops, everybody's, we're not, we're not as social as we once were because of COVID. So my oldest son said to me, he says, Dad, we got convocation today, and uh, uh, I need you to cut my hair before Sunday. And I jokingly looked at him, and I said, I'm not going to cut your hair. And then he said, hmm, and he walked away. And I said, well, what, what's that supposed to mean? He says, I know you, and you will not have them call Pastor Gaskin's son up to the stage and have him on stage without a haircut. Mm. Because I know who you are, I know what you're going to do. Come on and shout glory. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, I know that you are my father, and I understand that you're going to take good care of me. Come on and shout glory. Uh, sometimes, sometimes our children don't understand just how much the father loves them. Hallelujah. But I can remember my middle boy, Jordan. I can remember he went to an after school program. And when I picked him up, we were riding on our way home. And he said to me, he says, Dad, they were teasing in the program. And I said, well, did you tell the teacher? He says, yeah, I told the teacher. I said, what did the teacher do? He said, the teacher didn't do anything. I stopped mid-street, made a U-turn dialed my mother-in-law and said you better pray for me because I'm about to catch a case as saved and as sanctified as I am I said because they're messing with my son and I walked in there I didn't have Vaseline but if I did I would have rubbed the Vaseline on my face you know and I walked up to the teacher I said hey my son explain to me some things were going on and the teacher apologized and took responsibility. And after I got out of there, I said, okay, because I said I was going to be like Brother Peter. Hallelujah. I didn't have a switchblade. But because that's my son, they know what I will do because they know who I am. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Now, I done matured spiritually. I'm, I'm in a better place now. Amen. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but because of who he is he knows what he will do and we must make sure that we know who he is that he's a keeper hallelujah that he's a way maker that he's a seed divider that he'll never leave us nor forsake us that he loves us with an everlasting love that we're the apple of his eye that he cast our sins as far as the east is from the west that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit that God's arms are open wide to us and that he loves us despite our faults and because I know who he is glory to God then I know what he will do thank you Jesus and so knowing who he is is a prerequisite and it is a requirement before you get into the valley come on and say thank you Jesus because now that I know who he is glory to God when I get in the valley I can deal with the valley come on and say thank you Jesus because the valley is designed to prepare you for the mountain come on and say glory before you get to the mountain you got to go through the valley hallelujah come on and shout glory 
See, you've got to understand when the enemy is attacking you, it's in order to prevent you from what's up ahead. Hallelujah. So when you feel like you are discouraged because of what the enemy is doing, you ought to hear God in your ear telling you, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. The devil knows when your due season is. Why do you think he's attacking you like he is? Because he understands due season is around the corner. Glory to God. And so when the enemy starts attacking you, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. I know you've been beat up. I know you've been worn. I know that you are tired. But understand that this is all designed so that you will be able to live in the mountaintop. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Listen, you got to be able to deal with your haters now. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to deal with that guy that keeps taking your parking spot. You're going to lose your salvation. You're going to lose your sanctification over somebody taking your parking spot. Over somebody looking at you funny. No, God says you got to be able to deal with this stuff. Because the place I'm taking you, you're going to have a whole lot of critics that don't mean nothing. And you got to be able to function like they don't mean anything. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you. If you can't manage it as a private, how can I make you a general? If you can't deal with the conflict that you're going through now, how can I elevate you to the place where I have truly called you? Your valley is just testing ground. Anybody been in the valley? Anybody been in a testing ground? Anybody in the valley right now? This is testing ground for where God wants to take you. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Now, while I'm in the valley, this is what he says. Yay, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. That's why, not because of what it looks like, hallelujah, not because of what people said to me, not because of what I'm hearing on the radio, not because of what's on CNN or Fox News, but I'm not going to fear any evil because I know you, hallelujah. I know you, God. I, I know you're my shepherd, so I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to look at what's happening externally because I know that you're with me. <clears throat> Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Because I know who you are. Hallelujah. I've got faith in you. I've got more faith in you than I have fear in my situation. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. I will fear no evil because you are with me. Watch this. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, I always read that text that the rod and the staff were for the sheep. But since I became a father, I understand that the rod and the staff is for your adversaries. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. You know how they say you're going to walk over, but you're going to limp back. That rod isn't just to keep the sheep in line. But that rod is also to let that wolf know you better back up. Hallelujah. And watch this. It says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So it's not that I am doing the warring because the battle don't even belong to me. The battle belongs to God. Hallelujah. And so when I know who he is, what the text is telling me is that there are some battles that God is going to fight on my behalf. Come on and shout glory. You can't get excited about that unless you got some gray hair or unless you lost some hair. But if you have any experience, you know there are some battles that you didn't even have to fight. There's some situations that you didn't have to lift a finger to settle because God worked it out on your behalf. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Anybody ever experienced that, that God worked the situation out? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now watch this. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now, if somebody prepares a table for you, that means that you are in a position of rest. I'm preparing a table for you. That means that you are in a position of rest. You're not in a position of stress when you're sitting at the dinner table. 
You are not in a position of stress and anxiety when you're about to eat a meal. You are in a place of peace and relaxation. And so what God is saying is, I'm going to teach you how to be at peace when chaos is going on around you because you know who I am. Can anybody help me and say amen? He says, so I'm going to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies and everything that you need, I will supply. I'm going to give you the favor that you need. I'm going to give you the direction that you need. I'm going to give you the guidance that you need. I'm going to open up the doors that need to be opened. I'm going to close the doors that need to be closed. I'm going to shut the mouth of those whose mouths need to be shut. I'm going to give you everything that you need, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it in the presence of your enemies. Watch this, not just so that you will know who I am, but so that your haters will turn around and begin to give me glory as well. Come on and shout hallelujah. I'm going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Now watch this. If you've got an enemy, you've got an adversary, and the Bible lets us know we don't wrestle against what? Flesh and blood, but against principalities. Your enemy isn't the flesh and blood that you see. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. And this is where we get into spiritual warfare. Mm. Watch this. The enemy is coming in to attack you. God is going to use the weak things to confound the strong. Hmm? Satan is a fallen angel. God made us a little lower than the angels. So Satan has more strength than us in our own human ability. But watch this. But God has chosen the weak things to confound the strong. Hmm. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. I go around my house half the time afraid. Say, what are you afraid of? Uh, There's too much equipment here, but I would have my son Jeffrey stand next to me. He's just as big as I am, and he's a wrestler. Now, because of COVID, they haven't been able to wrestle. So since I'm the only person in the house that's his size, guess what he wants to do? And he says, come on, Dad, let me show you this wrestling move. Now he's taking self-defense, and he says, Dad, this is even better. He says, because what they teach us how to do is to disable our opponent. Let me show you this move that I learned, and my foot would just go right straight through your knee. I said, that's all right, son. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested in wrestling. And what I learned from him, he took judo, and, and in judo, you use your opponent's weight against them. Hallelujah. And so when the enemy attacks you, you got to use his momentum against them. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Now watch this. The Bible teaches us a secret about dealing with your enemies. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that you ought to pray for your enemies, and in doing so, you will heap hot coals of fire on their head. When you start praying for your enemies, watch this, God knows how to change their mind. Now watch this. Not only that, When you pray for your enemies, Job 42 and 10, the Bible says that uh, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. But those were frenemies. They came to Job and told Job, the reason you're in such a fix is because you must have sinned. And as Job began to pray for his frenemies, God turned his own captivity. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. And so when God is preparing a table before you in the presence of your haters, in the presence of folks that wish you no good, in the presence of those that despitefully use you, your mission is to pray for those that would do you wrong because in doing so, you will turn your captivity. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. The devil is coming with you with force, but when you begin to say, God, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Lord, save them and their family. Lord, cover them from this coronavirus. What you're doing is you're taking the enemy's momentum and you're flipping it away. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. 
Anybody got some enemies in this place? Hallelujah. Anybody got folks that look their nose down, look down upon you? If you do what God is calling on you to do, right in the presence of your enemies, is to say, I'm praying for you. I pray that God would bless you. I pray that all would be well with your household. I pray that God would cover you. And when you begin to do that, it's the weak things that confound those things that are strong. It's the, it's the foolish that confounds those things that are wise. When you begin to pray for your enemies, come on and say, thank you, Jesus. So I want you to understand today that we got to know who he is. Before you get to the mountain, you got to know who he is. Because when you know who he is, now you can walk through the valley. It might look dark in the valley, but you know that God is with you. So you don't have to fear any evil. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. You can walk through the valley. You can walk into the boardroom. You can walk into the meeting room. You can walk into the conversation and not be afraid and not quiver and not shake shake because God is with you and you know who he is. Now watch this. Just so you don't get big headed, he says that he does it for his name's sake. Just like my son said to me, I don't have to worry if you really want to cut my hair. It's all about your reputation and God is saying my reputation is on the line. I'm not going to let you go into that meeting and be made a fool of. My reputation is on the line. I'm not going to allow you to go into that school and fail because my reputation is on the line. I'm not going to let you launch that new business deal and fail because it's my reputation on the line. I'm not going to allow your child to be lost. I'm not going to allow the enemy to have his way with them because it's my reputation on the line. Come on and say thank you Jesus. Why don't you praise God that you've got a father that's got a good reputation. Hallelujah. And let me tell you the last thing here that the Bible says that it is the valley of the shadow of death. Hallelujah. So sometimes you can see shadows and shadows can be very scary. But if you are in the presence of the shadow, it means that you're also in the presence of the sun. Come on and say thank you Jesus. If there is a shadow, it means that the sun is up and the sun is still shining. How many people understand that the sun is up. Not the S-U-N but the S-O-N. The sun is up. He never sleeps nor does he slumber. And the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro the whole earth looking to show himself mighty on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. You ought to take joy in knowing that the sun is up and he's shining his light on you. He sees you in the midst of the valley. He sees you in the midst of your trial. He sees you in the midst of your darkness. He sees you in the midst of your anxiety. And he says, don't worry about a thing because I am with you. I'm going to cover you right now. And I know it's dark right now because you're in the valley. But if you keep on walking through that valley, you're going to get to a wealthy place. And this is what gave me joy in the text because after he prepares a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil. Glory to God. He anoints my head with oil. Oil that protects me from the wiles of the devil. Oil that covers my entire life. Oil that blesses me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. He has given me oil. Hallelujah. He has anointed my head with oil. Watch this. So my anointing doesn't come from the job. My anointing doesn't come from my colleagues. My anointing doesn't come from friends or family. But it was he who hath anointed my head with oil. It was he that kept me in the valley. It was he that protected me when my enemies would have consumed me. It was he that kept me going when I would have stood still and fell. It was he that gave me the power to stand and having done all to stand, to stand therefore. It was he who encouraged my heart and encouraged my soul. He's the one that has anointed my head with oil. 
oil. Watch it. And my cup runneth over. Watch it. I got enough oil for me and my family. I got enough oil for me and my children. I got enough oil for me and my household. So I'm not just blessed, but everything connected to me has an expectation for overflow. Come on and say overflow. If you're connected with me, get ready to be blessed. If you're connected to me, get ready for more. If you're connected to me, get ready for exceedingly. Get ready for abundantly. Above all you can think or imagine. According to the power that's at work within you. Come on and shout glory. My family's blessed. My children are blessed. My finances are blessed. My home is blessed. My church is blessed. Because it's he that anoints me with oil. And my cup runneth over. Thank you, Jesus. But what really gives me joy, hallelujah, God is not just anointing me so I can pay this month's rent. He's not just anointing me so I can deal with this one co-worker. But what he's doing is he's transitioning me from the valley to the mountain because he says my cup runneth over. Then he says, surely goodness, hallelujah, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's not just for today. It's not just for this mountain. It's not just for this valley. But God has given me a holistic anointing, an anointing that's going to follow me. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We bless your name. So I understand that you might be in a valley right now. Understand that the valley is there to prepare you for the mountain. But you've got to know who he is. Glory to God. And he's a way maker. And he's a keeper. And he is my friend. And he covers me. And he blesses me. And I know him for myself. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Come on and give him glory. Come on and give him honor. Come on and give him praise. For the great things that he has done. Something good is going to come out of this. Something good is going to come out of your valley experience. You got to know who he is in the midst of this valley. You got to be able to deal with folks that have something to say. Because guess what? They're going to always have something to say. You got to be able to deal with that. And when he brings you to the mountain, hallelujah, that is where God will get the full glory out of your life. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Come on and bless his name. He's wonderful. And he is good. Hallelujah. Something good is going to come out of this. Won't we pray right now? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, for the power of your word. Thank you for the power of that is in the atmosphere right now. God, we thank you that our thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are our ways your ways and that sometimes we walk through the valley. But God, we thank you that you see us in the valley and that everything that we are going through, that you can see it and that you're with us and you didn't bring us to the valley to die, mm. but you brought us to the valley to prepare us, hallelujah, to prepare a table for us and to bring us to an anointed and a wealthy place. Oh God, we give your name glory and we give your name honor, hallelujah. Lord, we want to know you better right now, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We want to know you better right now, oh God. Take our heart, take our mind, Lord. Take all of us right now, God, and fill us the more with your spirit and the more of your power. Strengthen our walk with you, oh God, that you would be glorified in all that we say and do. Have us to come together in fellowship. Have us to be focused in on you, God that you would receive glory out of our lives. There may be one listening today that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. 
I'm going to ask that you would repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge our sins and we know we've done wrong. Forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We believe that you died for our sins and that you rose again. And Lord, we receive salvation that only comes from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you and we bless you. And let us all say thank God and amen and amen. Praise God. We want to remind you to be with us, brothers, on tomorrow for our men's day, for our men's call. And on Tuesday, ladies, we're going to have our Zoom Zumba. And we want to invite you and encourage you to be a part of that fellowship. Amen. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And let everyone say thank God and amen. God bless you, and thank you for coming. Amen. I just want to praise you.